So I've got this old lamp that I've had. It's got like grapes on the bottom of it. And I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to make me a bird bath. So I have gold paint. I think I'll paint the bottom of it. But I think I have some metallic. I may paint this. I don't know if I'll paint it all gold or... But we shall see. i got to take it all apart. I went to Goodwill and I got me a bowl to put on top. So we'll have to see how this is right here. If it's flat enough or what I will have to do. So this is the bottom of my lamp. And I'm going to spray paint it with this metallic gold rust-oleum. It does have some rust in the inside, so I'll make sure I'll spray it inside and out. This will be kind of bright, but I think it'll be okay in the garden. Well, it's not as bright as I thought it would be, or as goldish as it would be. <laughs> it's got some imperfections on it. That's fine. It gives it character. Yeah, let these dry, which won't take long in this hot sun, and we'll start assembling. I'm also going to spray paint the base, just so it'll last longer. All right, I had to paint the base silver. I've tried several different paints I had. This one here I got from Walmart. It, it's crappy. I don't know if it's just old or what, but it's just crappy. So I had to kind of take it off, but it gives it a little texture around there. I may throw some little gold on the grapes to coordinate with the base. So this is the bowl I got at Goodwill. I think it'll be okay. If it's not, I may put a little wire some chicken wire in the bottom so they have somewhere to stand. But that's my, what I'm gonna do. Okay, there's my little fountain. I used my old lamp. I kinda had to put like some chicken wire in there because it's a little too deep for the little birds. I don't know if they'll see it or not, but if not, it's a nice little fountain. And being hot out here, that water's cold. <laughs> I have a large cord so I can set it in the sun over here. Trying to get it where the birds feel comfortable using it without maybe the kitty cats attacking it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a little covered there, so we'll see. I think they can see it because they're over there in that tree. So we'll see if they enjoy it, if they use it. They gotta see them. Oh, Ooh, he's flying up there. My little birdies. Got a little breeze. It's like by now it's probably 10 to 7 in the afternoon. <laughs> he is calling somebody, boy. But he is going to town up there. Oh, I think it's a he because he's putting on like a dance up there. I see him jumping up and flying a little bit. But it's soothing out here. Hey guys, I'm headed out to Goodwill. I gotta get a picture frame. It's 83 degrees out today. Clear skies. 83, but it's hot. No breeze. So I'm just waiting for my sister outside. She's gonna pick me up. I'm gonna run up there and get me a picture frame from um, a baby picture of mine. It's like a 16 by 20. It's getting all tore up. The picture, if I don't put it in a frame, it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> I mean, it's probably when I was maybe four. I know it was before I started kindergarten. That's like 60-some years old. <laughs> oh, well. All right, guys. So 
I made this uh, lemon pepper chicken yesterday, so I cut it up. I got some Swiss chard that actually came from my garden out there. <laughs> it was sitting there, not being watered. So I put it in another pot, and today I picked about uh, about five or six leaves that I'm going to cut up, do a stir fry. I think I'll add some corn. I got some cut up cabbage. This is leftover. I think I'll just blend it in with the vegetables, some onions, and uh, yeah, we'll have a little stir fry din din. You know, I cook a lot of stir fry dinners, but going to Korea, I learned how to use whatever you have, leftovers, and you could do a stir fry. So I have a little chicken, little vegetables, onions, and we eat it over rice. I mean, that's the best way to me to eat leftovers. Okay guys, here's how my dinner looks. I've got white rice underneath, and my vegetables, noodles, some corn, I got the chicken, Hope it tastes as good as it looks. And then some milk. Hey guys, I know I look like a mess here. I'm kind of feeling under the weather. I don't know. It was almost like uh, food poisoning type symptoms. But nobody else had got sick and we all ate the same food. So it must have just been a little bug I picked up. I ended up throwing up. Once I did that, I felt better. But, oh, it was like in my lower back was hurting, and I had like a headache, and I don't like feeling like that. So I was real nervous about eating yesterday, and, you know, because I, I didn't want to, I haven't thrown up in a long time, so, you know, you have no control when that happens. It just, zip, gotta go with it. So I'm just, I needed to do a lot of running around today, but, yeah, stayed in the house, and just kind of drinking water and, you know, because that makes you feel weak after your body goes through something like that. You're like, kind of kicks you in the butt a little bit and you got to be on the couch for a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to let you guys know, I started on this little project. My sister had gave me a little bead loom, weaving loom. I don't know, they call it weaving or looming. And it's like those little bracelets you've seen. You could do earrings. So I went on YouTube to, you know, get educated on it. That was aggravating. You know, I have fat fingers, so <laughs> dealing with sometimes this little stuff is just, it could be aggravating. That's for sure. But I'll show you here uh, what I did. I did a little practice. Oh, did a little practice. I did a flag. Once I got done, I realized a bead on one of the rows, I didn't put enough beads. And I should, should have caught it then, but, you know, I'm still trying to use my fingers and hold stuff up. And, you know, I had to go out and buy these uh, needles. Get it right here. So I had to get some needles. These are big-eyed needles. I had a beading needle, and I just couldn't thread it. It was just, it had a little bitty eye, and I'm out here on the kitchen table and working it. But I wanted to do some Halloween bracelets. I'm starting with Frankenstein and I thought they would be kind of cool. I got a lot of seed beads and I might as well use them and I've got the right colors so I'm retired. What am I going to do? I thought I'd try my luck at this but oh it is aggravating. Like I said aggravating but I'll show you here. Okay so first of all I got this magnifying glass lamp because <laughs> I could not see nothing. Plus, you need a good light. So here's the little loom, and there's my Frankenstein that I started on there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, let me put my hand under here. Is it a focus on? There you go. There you go. So you see the beads are very little. You can see them over here. <laughs> but I got my patterns. I got Frankenstein, a vampire, a pumpkin, and... Let me see what else. I got boo, a skull. Now I did the flag. Oh, see right there? But if you see right there, oh, right there, I missed the red bead. I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess 
still trying to put your hands underneath here, you know, like hold them up there. You see, I don't have it as tight when I tied them together. Uh, one of my threads is sticking up there. Process. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, like I said, I got the beads. I might as well use them. See if I could do this bracelet. I measured it out to be about seven and a half. And like I said, I had to get the needle because I couldn't thread it. And uh, see, there's the thread. You know, it's a learning process. You don't know if you could do something unless you try it. I mean, I got a good beading needle. I could just thread them and put them on stretchy cord or anything. I need to get these stu this stuff done because I've had it for a while. And it's not doing any good laying like that. It needs to be turned into something like that little flag <laughs> okay as you see I got two Frankenstein heads with the beads <laughs> can you see them try to get it in focus here oh there it is I know I have it well you can see it in here can't really see the colors that way but kind of hard to see it I guess there a little bit but you get the gist of it. So, all right. All right, guys, here I am. It's uh, Thursday morning, probably about uh, 10 o'clock, <laughs> something like that. On my bead weaving, practice does make better. <laughs> so at first it was kind of aggravating because, you know, I'm learning as I go. But the thread I had had to be has to be like waxed, and the thread I had kept uh, splitting, so it wouldn't go back through the little needles because it was, you know, unraveled. So when I looked it up, it was you need some beeswax. I rub along the strain to condition it if it's not already pre-waxed. I didn't know that. So I went back to another thread I had. It's working fine. I do have a $5 voucher for Michaels, and I may run over there today, get me a, a spool of waxed beading thread. So I'll have it on hand. A lot of the stuff I have, I've had for a long time. Uh, it could be compromised because I have had it for a while. So there's that. But I wanted to show you what progress I did with my little bracelet. It's coming along pretty good. Now this is going to be my bracelet because it's the first one. It's my learning bracelet. I, th I think the time I do this pattern for seven, seven and a half inches for my bracelet, I think I should be pretty good whipping out another one. I also seen uh, that I thought was pretty easy to do was to do like chandelier earrings or earrings. Don't put them on the weave. She just did it like in her hand. I do have another little board where I could tie down the strings a little bit to hold one in down. But I'd really like to make some earrings. I've got a lot of uh, earring hoops and stuff so I can give me a break from the two. Yeah, that's pretty much it.